For years, Michigan State University College of Human Medicine researchers in the Division of Public Health have been working with Flint community partners to improve the health of the community, improve access to health care, reduce health disparities, and advance policies and interventions that aim to eliminate structural racism in health care. And every step of the way, the Charles Stewart Mott Foundation has been a visionary partner by providing the funding for space and endowed faculty positions. The support from the Mott Foundation has allowed MSU to invest in public health researchers seeking community-minded solutions to tackle issues like the Flint water crisis and the coronavirus pandemic. Over the past six years, MSU's Division of Public Health has brought in more than $115 million in federal research funding for these efforts. Now the university is creating its first fully philanthropically named department in recognition of this long-term support as MSU seeks to expand its efforts to recruit top talent. The expanded academic unit in Flint will allow for significant growth in faculty as well as increased community programming. The Charles Stewart Mott Department of Public Health is the first named department at Michigan State University. The Charles Stewart Mott Foundation granted $25 million to expand the Michigan State University College of Human Medicine's public health presence in Flint approximately one year ago. The grants created an endowed fund to attract and retain public health faculty, increase academic research, and boost community partnerships. As a result, the public health division has grown and was recently elevated to a department. The naming of department is in recognition of the Mott Foundation's transformational support. And here to discuss this with me, Dr. Aaron Souza, Dean of the College of Human Medicine, Dr. Mona Hanna Atisha, Charles Stewart Mott Endowed Professor of Public Health, and Founding Director of the Pediatric Public Health Initiative, and Ridgeway White, President and CEO of the Mott Foundation. So let's start with you, Dean Sousa. I mean, what has sort of been happening in the College of Human Medicine, and, and why has public health been on such a growth trajectory? Thank you, Russ. The college uh, was founded as really the first medical school in the country based on a community um, focus. So we have been in our communities for the 60 years or so that the college has been in existence, and that includes Flint. And as we were trying to figure out what to do to better engage with communities, uh, foster better health, uh, better healthier communities, public health is really where that where that kind of rubber hits the road. And and our partners in Flint. Hurley Medical Center, McLaren, uh, the Mott Foundation, you started putting together this kind of concept of a community-based public health program. We really sort of philosophically wanted to be in the community, invite the community into our building, and I think really most importantly, work with the people as, of Flint as collaborators. And you've started to mention the partners, specifically the Charles Stewart Mott Foundation. Talk about what that has meant to the college in MSU. So the you know the the work of a college really is about students and faculty, right? We we work on creating workforce, right? That's our graduates go out and do wonderful work in the world, um, and our faculty are about discovery and teaching. And there is a real place for figuring out how science and what's happening in the world, how you can use that to implement change uh, where people live. Um, and, and that's the work that really only students and faculty do in our society. So the, Mott, the Charles Stewart Mott Foundation's gifts to support uh, faculty like Mona here, but also space where, where they work, that allows us to do really remarkable scholarship and discovery. We have people trying to figure out how to reduce suicide, people trying to figure out how to have better nutrition for kids, people trying to figure out how to have a healthier environment in the community of Flint. All of that work is made possible by the financial support, and then our faculty leverage that with federal funding, especially NIH dollars, that then come into the community, get spent, in the community, there are you know 
dozens and dozens of jobs in the community supported by that federal money. So we really do try to leverage the philanthropy and the good work of the Mott Foundation through what our students and faculty do. And say more about what it means to have the name of Charles Stuart Mott on the, on the department. Oh, we're so honored and delighted. And there are two things going on with that. One is in the switch from being a division to a department. So this is kind of arcane, you know, inside baseball academic stuff. But a department is the home of faculty in the sort of traditional university. It's where they have their all of their HR world and their support and they have and where they get promoted. And so converting from a division where they had to belong to some other department, now they get to actually have their home, all of their academic home in Flint in the Charles Stuart Mott um, Department of Public Health. And then the Mott Foundation has done just phenomenal work, uh, you know, around the world. Their work in in, uh, community schools in Flint has been groundbreaking. Their dedication to the people of Flint is just astonishing. And then when you start looking at the work that they've done to support um, civil society, uh, some of that stuff is just really exciting, and, and it's great to be a part of. And Dean Souza, you've really been talking about it, but what is the value and importance of elevating and structuring the faculty and staff into its own department? How will this benefit programming in Flint to create impact for the community and really the state and the nation? You know, I think there are a couple things that happen. It it really does make in, you know permanent, right, our, our position, right, in a building with faculty, with an academic home, um, people who have tenure in that department, it, it is, that is the basic unit of a university. And um, it, it, the, having it in Flint, not in East Lansing, is not an easy thing for the university. Um, having it be named, this is the first department to be named in the 150 some odd year history, 170 year history of the university. There's a whole research project in trying to verify that, right? <laughs> but, um, you know, since 1855, it's happened once. And I, I think that just speaks volumes to what this, these faculty and our students have done. Very, very cool indeed. And, and talk about additional opportunities for others interested in supporting the work of the Charles Stewart Mott Department of Public Health. You know, the great thing about public health is that, first of all, we all benefit, right? Clean water, clean air, vaccines, they all sort of increase the health of the herd, of the community. We all need that. We need our, our, our families to be healthy, our workers to be healthy, the people we work for. I mean, like all of that stuff really matters. And, and that spreads all across the work of a great institution like Michigan State University. So there are opportunities for students who are in business, who are here in communication. There's a phenomenal health communications group in this college. Uh, the people who are in arts and things in those areas, I mean, they're, that's how we speak to the world, right? We just went through a pandemic where trying to get us, ourselves all on the same page was a big deal or not, right? And so there are so many ways uh, across uh, all parts of the university that that health and public health are areas where we can collaborate. Our faculty have been great about collaborating, and that's a real part of our strength. Really well said. And that's a Dr. Aaron Souza, the dean of MSU's College of Human Medicine. And let's bring in Dr. Mona Hanna Atisha. She is the Charles Stewart Mott Endowed Professor of Public Health and founding director of her baby, the Pediatric Public Health Initiative. And uh, Dr. Mona. One of the hallmarks of MSU's work in Flint has been through listening to the Flint community and asking the community to to inform MSU's research focus. So talk about how this work will continue and how it may improve health equity, address disparities, and improve the lives of Flint residents. Thanks, Russ. That's a great question. You know, I've had this amazing privilege of traveling all over the country and, and working in other public health programs and learning about what they do. And there is no other place that does public health or thinks about health as as we do. Um, we were born in this really bizarre way. We didn't just say, hey, we're really smart and we're the university and we're going to come into this community and we're going to fix your problems. We sat and we listened. And this was the brainchild of Dean Sousa when he first sought out to build this public health program in Flint. And we had community meetings and forums and town halls and surveys. And, and we literally asked the community, like, hey, what do you want us to work on? And based on that, 
you know, the public health programming in Flint was born and has grown and grown. And we've never lost sight of, of that that kind of conception of being community partnered. Um, community continues to be um, humble partners in all of our work, part of all of our new hires, part of our programming, part of our decision making. And in so many kind of um, ways, we've institutionalized that community partnership. Um, and um, this is once again, really, really unique. This is not done. This is um, talked about a lot, uh, the need to be community partnered, community driven, um, community engaged, but we are absolutely walking that talk in Flint and and doing work this way doing health this way um, has an increased likelihood of success we are working on issues that our community wants us to work on um, and it's it's more likely to achieve health equity and what are some of the current research projects taking place in the public health area? OMG, the list is long. Um, we have um, amazing faculty in our public health department um, doing really a breadth of really innovative, um, good work. Uh, I've mentioned that, you know, all the folks that work in our building, they literally kind of wear their heart on their sleeves and it shows by the work they're do that they're doing. Um, we have folks ta tackling um, maternal mortality and infant disparities, um, depression and perinatal depression, uh, developing an app for pregnancy that's being used all around the country to make sure that expectant moms get what they need, looking at geography and historic and systemic issues that are that create current health inequities. Um, so the list is long and ginormous of the the research that is happening, um, not only to improve the lives of people in Flint, but really um, to improve kind of lives of people all over in, in very similarly impacted communities. And how might the naming of the department impact the work of the faculty and researchers? Yeah, um, that's huge. I'm just going to give a round of applause right now for the, the first named department in the university. Like, I had no idea it was the first so name. So cool. It's so cool. Um, and so it, not only does it speak volumes to our place within the university, I think it speaks volumes to our place kind of really kind of within the nation and, and the kind of the credibility of our work that we are a named department. It allows us to have more kind of class. Out, um, kind of more ability to to promote our work, to be able to recruit more high you know high quality talent. Um, so we are grateful for the naming of of the department, and I think it's going to yield an even greater return on investment. And how has the data produced by those MSU researchers you were talking about helped inform action? influence policy and really improve people's lives. Yeah, we have several examples of how, you know, our work, um, the data that that we have derived um, has translated into into practice and, and ultimately into policy. Uh, one of my favorite examples is our work with um, nutrition insecurity. So in Flint, you know, our families really struggle with making sure that they have high quality food to eat that's affordable and accessible. Uh, so, you know, our initiative started a fruit and vegetable prescription program. It just started in our little clinic in Flint. Um, but we, with our academic hats, have been robustly evaluating this work. Um, it's now NIH funded and we've been, you know, it's shown great outcomes in improving nutrition, you know, intake and knowledge and behaviors. And Senator Stabenow, who sadly just announced her retirement, um, has been to our clinic. She's, you know, very prominent in ag committee, agricultural committees, uh, the co-sponsor of the U.S. Farm Bill, included um, a national nutrition prescription program in the Farm Bill. Uh, it started out as $25 million. It has since increased to $40 million a year, uh, a policy to do national fruit and vegetable prescriptions based on our work and our evidence and our data that we were able to build in Flint. Um, so that is just one example. There's many more examples of how, once again, our work in Flint has had ripple effects across the country uh, to improve um, you know, health equity all over. Thank Can you. I just jump in? Because yes. I was just about to bring you in. <laughs> If it wasn't this is Ridgeway for... White now, the president and CEO <laughs> of the Mott Foundation. Thank you for all this great support, and please weigh in. Yeah, I was just on, on, on the impact. If it wasn't for Dr. Monahan and Atisha and the MSU Department of Public Health, we wouldn't have had uh, the science that was needed to prove that Flint was, that the, the blood levels in the, in the children of Flint was elevated. And that has had huge ripple effects on all kinds of policy, most recently in the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act and the IRA, and that's delivered $55 billion Absolutely. for IIJA, billions of dollars in state state and federal funding for 
water initiatives on clean, affordable, accessible water for all, all across the United States. And so, you know, <laughs> if it wasn't for this program, it wouldn't yes. have that huge yeah. impact. Yeah, I would not have come. I was an MSU, CH, College of Human Medicine, Flint medical student dozens of years ago. Mm. And um, the former dean, Dean Rapley, called me and said, Mona, we're about to do something really cool in Flint. We're going to bring public health to Flint. And that's what brought me back to Flint was this kind of uh, this growth of public health uh, in Flint. So I would not have been here without all of this public health stuff happening. Um, and yes, it was kind of our data and our advocacy that not just kind of change the trajectory of a city, but has absolutely influenced national policy and state policy. On Ridgeway, what, it's important to you and the foundation that research and programming in Flint remain community-based. Why? What's the motivation behind that? Yeah, I mean, just first and foremost, uh, MSU has been an amazing partner, a great grantee, and the Ma Foundation is only as good as its grantees. And so really applaud MSU for taking these dollars and maximizing them. Um, you know, we always say nothing about us without us, and that rings really true to MSU's mantra and the land grant sort of mm -hmm. philosophy uh, of MSU. And and in, for the Ma Foundation, that's that's core to us. It's core to Flint because a lot of people in Flint have really amazing ideas, whether it's the DNA of the union or DNA of the nonprofit yep. complex in Flint. But they're really about helping solutions. And and when you're thinking about health. You definitely don't want somebody coming up with solutions for you without Absolutely. you. And so this program really grounds public health and all the policies around supporting a place like Flint, which is a former industrial city, and, and there's lots of ramifications that are positive that can come from that. And that's really the MSU way. We don't blow in and tell you everything you need to do. We want to listen and be partners. Isn't that right? Yeah, there are other institutions in the state who can do that. Uh, we're, we're much better. You know, our whole plan is that we're going to go in and work with people. And, and I think that the special thing about Flint that, that I think people maybe didn't realize is just how much expertise existed there and, and or exists there. They've been phenomenal collaborators, right? These are people on grants. They're people who are as for their community expertise, right, for their ability to work with the people around them and to understand the concerns of their neighbors. Um, without those collaborators, this kind of work can't happen. And I think we've been in Flint for over 100 years. Yes. We didn't roll yeah, over there. Well, there's a Flint water yeah, crisis. We better right. go. And, I and mean, that's why we've been successful, because we're trusted. We are a known entity that has been in the city for literally over a century. And Ridgeway, talk a little bit more about that, your longtime support of MSU and the College of Human Medicine. And, and what's, why is that an important relationship? Yeah, I mean, we, we, well, we had our own little research project, and we realized that the first grant to MSU was in 1935. It was for wow. $8. <laughs> General purposes support. What is that in today's dollars? Yeah, yeah. Well, I have some numbers on that. So, so we've granted now a total of $58 million. And inflation adjusted, that'd be about $100 million or nearly $100 million today. So the relationship has been long and it's been strong. Uh, it's been on everything from education to environment to community policing and, of course, health. And uh, talk more about sort of that shared vision of improving public health in Flint and beyond between Mott and MSU. Yeah, I mean, I think when we were first presented with the idea and it came about from some of the the community hospital leaders and, and health leaders and, and MSU. And we realized MSU had been in Flint for a long period of time and they were a natural partner. But it was really even more about understanding, explaining to doctors and getting them aware of the community. You know, if you, if you appreciate your surroundings, you appreciate what other people are going through, you're going to be able to provide that extra energy in health, whether it's to policy or, or supporting a person. And, uh, and it's just been huge. And the other thing that I would say is that you know, when you think about treating overall, like, like just symptoms of issues, like chronic issues of poverty and things like that, you know, that's like, great, we're, we're putting a Band-Aid on. But if you really go after the, the systemic, the root causes, which is what this program is designed to do, then you can really create long-term changes in trajectory for public health. And doing that for a community like Flint can, if we can do it for Flint, you yes. can do it across the country. And that's mm -hmm. why, you know, the NIH funding that comes to this program has exponential return 
more than than other cities and other programs. I think so. Can we give um, Ridgeway an honorary degree in public health? I, I, I mean, yeah. like he, <laughs> he, the, the, he's perfectly articulated. That was the thesis, right yes, there. That I was mean, a thesis, yes. right there. I mean, he has perfectly articulated <laughs> what public health is about. Uh, in this nation, we spend trillions on health care. We have built a sickness-based system, but we have failed to really go after those root causes, those root determinants of ill health. And that's what we're trying to do in Flint. We're trying to go upstream and address those root causes so that our hospitals aren't filled with chronic diseases, so that our life expectancy isn't 20 years less in Flint than another part of Genesee County. Uh, so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to graduation when mm. we can give him that. Yeah. Right. Combining <laughs> public health and, and practice medicine is kind of like yes. peanut butter and jelly sandwich if you don't have the two it just doesn't work <laughs> and that's what's so awesome about our department of public health it is within the medical school in so many other places it is a separate siloed school or department that's not related to the medical school having these two um, kind of departments or units married together really enables us to train a future workforce of physicians who understand what public health is and can see beyond the patient in front of them and can address these upstream determinants. And Ridgeway's passion for this work clearly rivals yours almost, Dr. Mona. The passion really comes through. And we've been talking about this all along, but Ridgeway, why is the foundation support for MSU crucial to the community of Flint? And how does the foundation envision the future for things like job creation and economic growth and really health of, health of the entire community? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the health of the community is core to economic development, cr job creation, lending policies, how you how you work on K through twelve education, how you think about you know future jo jobs of the future around healthcare. I think that comes in, and 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 just the direct jobs, right? I mean, the the leverage on mm -hmm. these grants have have leveraged, mm -hmm. as you said, hundreds of million, mm -hmm. hundred million dollars in NIH funding. You know, 200 mm -hmm. jobs, I think, or so mm -hmm. to date. I'll let, mm -hmm. I'll let MSU talk about the details mm -hmm. of that because I don't have all of them. But there's future job growth. Maybe Dr. Sousa could, could talk about the potential um, and, and hopefully bringing in other uh, funders to, to support this yep. work and, and leverage these dollars. Yeah, you know, there are, uh, if you take a look at what the college has done around the state, right? Like, so Grand Rapids is another place where we've, we've worked with the community. And often that kind of work is, in one part, people are interested in the science and the education and things like that. But there's a whole intellectual economy that comes along with a medical school or a health economy. And, and it's, well, let's just be honest, right? Like scientists and physicians and healthcare workers, they're paid reasonably well, and it's relatively recession-proof. I mean, it's a good core piece of economics for a community. And it's a great way for people, you know, in elementary and high school and college to see a future kind of career. So, so for an institution like Michigan State or the College of Human Medicine, that we really see ourselves as benefiting people across the spectrum in our communities, that has to include economic development. And that's a part of what, you know, we can do in Flint. These are good jobs for people who are educated and to encourage people to be educated and uh, for people who are in their community. And uh, it provides an opportunity for them to get more education. Our, our MPH, our Master's in Public Health, is online and available to people all over. So we're trying our best not just to look at the questions of discovery or education, but to broadly think about how we're making an impact on community. And Dean Souza, let me stay with you and ask you, if, is there anything important I haven't asked you yet, or what do you want to make sure those joining in on our conversation take away about the Charles Stewart Mott Department of Public Health at MSU? I, you know, the, the real thing that I, maybe I haven't spent enough on is just how much this is about collaboration, right? This is about working with hospitals. It's about working with philanthropy. It's about working with brilliant faculty like Mona and students. And if it it all has to come together. If if it doesn't all work, then you don't actually make any progress. And, and Mona talked a little bit about you know public health in a medical school, and I think that's one of the next places for us to be thinking about is how we bring the work of public health and and medicine together for the benefit of both. You could have a whole nother session with a group of of historians talking about how public health and medicine have not necessarily been together. We saw that in many ways during the pandemic. Life expectancy in this country hasn't changed much over it's the dropped, last decade. Dropped. It's actually gone down. 
And that's in part because we're not taking the lessons of public mm-hmm. health and using them when we think about health care and, mm-hmm. and healthy communities. So we, as a discipline or as disciplines um, and as a college, we need to be thinking about how we move that forward. And Dr. Mona, same question. What some key takeaways from this conversation today? You know, in a really short period, we have built awesome. We are doing awesome work in Flint, um, thanks to the um, investment and support of the CS Mott Foundation. Um, but really, in, in some ways, our work is just beginning. Um, so we look forward to the next um, few years. We look forward to more partnerships. We look forward to uh, more support, more folks out there listening who say, hey, I want to invest in this too. Come, you know, We welcome all, uh, all who want to support our work and who want to work with us. And Ridgeway White, same question. Yeah, you know, C.S. Mott believed that every individual in, exists in a kind of informal partnership with their community, and the health of that individual transpires into the health of that community mm-hmm. and vice versa. And so this project, MSU's new Department of Public Health, is just a huge step forward in creating that virtuous cycle. And the Mott Foundation's pleased to be partnered with MSU and uh, full steam ahead. These guys yes. are doing great work. Spartans awesome. will. One of, the, one of the great things that the Charles Stewart Mott Foundation has done is help uh, endow individual faculty. When you introduce, introduced uh, Mona earlier, she was the Charles Stewart Mott Professor of Public Health. That funding has allowed us to hire people and to attract people from places like Brown and Johns Hopkins and to really bring people in who could change the the way we do things. And uh, endowed faculty positions change our economics that allow us to hire people, and then they also are attractive. So the Charles Stewart Mott Foundation has provided money for that. They've also provided matching funds to help us raise money for more endowed faculty. It's uh, it's a really generous and important part of the the foundation support of our of our people. Originally, in the first couple of in the first grants that we had, the the Mott Foundation was just so important in helping us have faculty, but also space. So they help find and support the renovation of a wonderful old Albert Kahn building in downtown Flint, the former Flint Journal building. With these new gifts, there, we need more space. We, we need, we're going to have more faculty, and we need more space. And we've been working with the Mott Foundation and, and Uptown Reinvestment Corporation there on space in addition right next to the former Flint building. We look forward to um, releasing the, the pictures of that and uh, a, a groundbreaking soon, and so it's just a really exciting part of the whole project. Well, we've been talking about the Charles Stewart Mott Department of Public Health at Michigan State University's College of Human Medicine. We've done that with Dr. Aaron Souza, Dean of the College of Human Medicine, Dr. Mona Hanna Atisha, Charles Stewart Mott Endowed Professor of Public Health, and founding director of the Pediatric Public Health Initiative, and Ridgeway White, President and CEO of the Mott Foundation. Thank you all.